Okay, so uh, we've done the audio system on the truck, but real quick today, uh, I wanted to talk about something. I want to talk about how to test your amp to make sure it works because we were having a trouble whenever we installed the audio system on this thing. Whenever we had originally installed it, our amp was not coming on. The, our green light wasn't showing. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to disconnect the sub and I'm going to set it in the front seat. What I want to show you today is how to test your wiring. The most common cause of something not working is you didn't route the wires right. Wiring issues. I mean, with, whenever you're dealing with subwoofers and amplifiers, there's a lot of wiring that goes into it. You've got to run RCA cables. You've got to run a power lead from the battery. You've got to ground it. You've got to, you've got to also supply it with a 12 volt signal coming from the radio as a switch to turn it on. You know, so today I'm going to talk about how to test it and make sure how, how to figure out basically if your amp is bad. So, for example, this this entire setup right here was in a wreck. If you remember, I wrecked my white F-150. This is actually the sub and the amp that came out of it. I just put them in this truck and I changed the box is all I did. So, right today we're going to talk about that. Okay, so, really easy check to do is right here I have a... Harbor Freight meter, turn it on real quick. It's already set to 12 volts or 20 volts DC, as you can tell. That's how I have my meter set. So something that we're gonna do is we're gonna test from your 12 volt positive and your 12 volt ground. Okay, so we're gonna stick the ground on the ground if I can get that to. Okay, I can probably do this with one hand, but. For you to actually see the meter. Okay, so you can see I have 12.4 volts. What this tells you is that this wiring is good and this ground is good. So you're using the actual amplifier's ground and that checks to make sure that you're grounded right. And if you read 12.4 volts, which is battery voltage, then that does and then that means that you're good there. Okay? So now, if I do the same thing, and I go here, if I go remote wire, which is the wire coming from the back of your radio, if you go from it to ground, with the ignition off, you should get zero, zero. Okay? Zero, zero. I have nothing. Now, if I were to grab the key, let me get out of this truck. Oh, God. No, that was just my phone. It's fine. If I were to grab my key... And turn the radio on. Bye. Turning the ignition switch backwards. My radio should get gone. Close the door so that dinging. So, now with that on, we have audio disconnect, which is totally fine. That's not even what we're looking for right now. So, right now, what we're looking for. Is for me to get my butt back here in the back. Oh, goodness. So, as you can see, the green power light. Uh, you may not be able to tell. Okay, the green power light on the amplifier is on, which means that we're getting proper voltage and the amp is actually turned on. But if you remember before, we did not have 12 volts out our remote wire. Okay, but if we go now, we have. 11.73 which is fine that's a pretty that's a good amount it's enough to power the amplifier um that's probably definitely going to change with you know if you have headlights on or whatever but a way to remedy any situation like that would be to add a capacitor but i don't really need one i've never had to add a capacitor i've heard stories of guys that have because it's causing their headlights to dim or whatever but this is a pretty big truck it's a pretty big battery and I'm only running one. I'm only running one 10 inch subwoofer, and this is only really a 900 watt amp. I've got a 2000 in my Explorer, and it doesn't dim the headlights on it. So, you know, I don't know. You may have to run a capacitor, and that, that you know that may deal with your voltage spikes or whatever. But yeah, guys. So, I hope you understand now how to test power to the amplifier. Um, a lot of amplifiers now do have this green indicator light. That is a power light that tells you that it is on and that it's working. Now, if your sub isn't hitting, it could mean that you have a blown sub. Um, that's a pretty common issue. 
that a lot of them have and a lot of people mistake it for an amplifier issue. Let me open this. Uh, let me get some air in here. Yeah, my back of my truck's already dirty and I just got it. So, <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, guys. So, yeah, that's how you test an amplifier. If you have any questions about how to test an amplifier or anything that you're dealing with, just uh, let me know. If you if you've tested all this and you and you're getting power to your amplifier, generally speaking, that means that there's something wrong inside the amplifier. And there are shops that will repair amps, or you can just buy a new one. Whatever. This is a crunch. It's I mean it's not really an expensive amp. I haven't had any trouble out of it. So I've got a crunch amp in this one, and I've got a what is the other one? The other one I, I can't remember the brand of it, but it's like a Planet Audio or something. It's not an expensive brand, but I'll, I'll, I'll probably write it at the bottom of the screen right here, just so that y'all know what it is. And I haven't had a problem out of either of my amplifiers, um, and I think they produce enough boom as they are. I've actually, I actually did a system for my buddy. I've got a video of it on my channel. It'll be in the description, where I installed two, two Kicker 12s with a Kicker amp. And that one, that one hits plenty hard, but, and it actually, I actually do think it hits harder than my Explorer does and maybe that's because of the amplifier I'm really not too sure also it was in a Dodge Avenger and not a full-size SUV so I'm not really too sure guys but um yeah so I want to talk about this truck I haven't talked about it in a minute I got the transmission back in it we saw that video and I got it to the house there's a lot that happened in between there that I did not record about I did not talk about but I will post that in a separate video talking about everything that has happened to this thing. We went through a good bit of transmission problems, but we still have a problem and we're pretty confident it's exhaust. Um, because basically, and I would I would crank it up unless you guys hear it, but it's really something that you just kind of have to see and feel. Um, whenever you crank it up and whenever you're driving it, it'll make these loud popping noise and it. it's backfiring out of the exhaust is what we finally figured out it was doing. Thought it might have been popping from the torque converter, but um, anyway, after we got done replacing the torque converter, which, like I said, that's going to be a whole other video. So try not to think too much about the transmission right now. Just I'll talk about that in a whole separate video. But anyway, so we ended up figuring out, and we've been driving it for a little bit. We figured out it's popping from the exhaust, which means it stopped up. There's barely any puffing coming out here, and you can, I mean, you can sit here and barely feel it. You can't even hear it rumble. And we've got another 302 Ford, and we crank it up today, and you can sit there and listen to that thing rumble. It sounds like a V8, a mean, nice engine. This thing, we're pretty sure the catalytic converters are stopped up, so I think we're going to bypass those, and that may or may not be the next video. Um, I may start on that today, but it's been raining, so it's kind of wet. But something I've been thinking about doing to this truck, guys, and I think it's really cool, is having like lights that go in the fender well, that like light up. I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. And then maybe some on the interior too. I, I can't open this door. I'll walk around. Oh, and I still have to do headlights. Headlight buckets and that stuff. And I'm actually going to leave this grill. The chrome is peeling on it. But I'm going to see if I can get it like re-chromed or whatever. No, I'm not painting it black. So don't even think about it. It's staying chrome. I love chrome. Um, but... I'm thinking about doing like maybe some lights. This already has a light right here that I need to fix. I fixed it on that side, but I, I forgot to put a bulb in it on this side. And I want to do LEDs there, so I want to take this panel back off. I want to buy some some small LED bulbs because I have these like I put in the dome light, but those are too big. They don't fit in there, so I need to buy the small ones that will fit in that. And I want to replace all the dash lights with LEDs, headlights, tail lights, LEDs. I already have headlights. And I'm thinking about doing like lights all around through here, making it kind of light up, but I don't want it visible, so, unless I, I didn't mean to do that, but unless I can figure out like an invisible way to do it, probably won't do that. I'll probably just stick with these right here being LEDs, that middle one being an LED, and maybe swapping those two side ones out for LEDs as well. And then, that doesn't even work, did not know that, could be blown bulbs, um, that's what it was on the white truck, we remember that, but. Yeah, we'll probably tackle that soon. I'm trying to get my toolbox fixed. It got pretty tore up in the wreck, but I don't really have the money right now to fix it, so I'm just kind of holding off. Um, I actually, this will be in this video, I believe. I bought this camper for it because my cousin sold it to me for a really good deal. 
but it doesn't fit my truck very well so I'm just gonna resell it uh, but it's pretty nice camper it's a tool body camper got toolboxes in it and all that stuff and it would have been great for my truck if it would have fitted I would have had it like repainted and stuff but yeah it doesn't fit hey look wide F-150 wheels ha 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 but yeah so probably gonna end up selling this one and I may buy another camper for this I wanted opinions on that kind of see what guy but it's kind of see what people liked if they like the toolbox better or the camper better I know I saw this thing with a camper on it and I liked it so I don't really know what I'm gonna do yet um so yeah guys I think that is gonna do it for today's video I want to thank you guys for watching um I I, I think I went over the four-wheel drive problem in our video uh, of the transmission I didn't do a very good job so I may because I might take it apart clean everything and grease it again because I didn't really do a good job of that the first time so I may do that again and then show you exactly what happened to our four-wheel drive but yeah it's, as, as of right now everything works on this truck uh, windows roll up windows roll down power door locks work everything works the only thing that I have yet to do on the audio system I've already done the radio and the two door speakers but I did not do the back two uh, speakers yet and that's simply because I just kind of haven't tackled it yet because what I have to do is I have to remove this back headrest and all these plastic trims because there's actually no way of removing them so all this trim has to come out up there through the headliner and down there behind that all that plastic trim has to come out and it's not really that big of an issue to tackle like I said guys I just haven't done it yet so and then there'll be a lot of cleaning involved then too but uh yeah so overall like I said guys I do have plans for this truck things I'd like to do uh let me know how you feel about wheel well lights let me know how you feel about you know LEDs on the whole thing I'm sure everybody's gonna love that idea because LEDs gonna make everything better um so yes I don't have a whole lot else to talk about so I think I've discussed everything and then like I said in the upcoming video I'll talk about the transmission problem I had because you know somebody sold me a transmission that has got some problems and I'm not happy with them and they didn't treat me right but we will, uh, we will definitely talk about that in a future video. For now, guys, I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying watching me work on this truck, uh, enjoying the channel, what I'm doing lately. 429 is coming along nicely. I'll have to update you guys on that, and I'll have to, I'll have to record me doing some of it. But um, in the meantime, guys, like I said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. If you didn't like it, dislike, tell me why, tell me what I can improve, how I can do better. But uh, yeah guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.